Hey everyone, I um, thought I would do another video uh, this week on, um, it's something that I've had in the back of my mind for a little while, and it's, it's a topic that is discussed a little bit, um, is the importance of maintenance calories. Now I haven't written any notes about this, and honestly I haven't thought about it that much, I just wanted to come out with some stuff today. Um, but before we get into that, what's going on with me, training wise? Um, just started the last phase of my massing period. As you can see, I'm a little bit thicker, probably not very lean, um, but work in progress, right? So I will do a mini cut after this and play around with maybe a lower volume phase, like a strength phase for like four weeks um, to get some resensitivity. Uh, take a break from hypertrophy training and uh, see if that tidies me up some. I've been a little bit better with calories post uh, post Christmas and stuff like that, but also trying to realize that this isn't a cut. So while it's not a fat minimization phase, it's also a not fat a fat maximization phase. So just eating, trying to eat around two nine to three two, um, with an average around three three one three two, and just sort of tracking weight as I do it. Um, on good days, I have okay ab definition. On bad days, less so. So, I mean, wouldn't be wanting to get in front of anybody without a shirt on right now. But, I mean, you know, that can be just my dysmorphia and whatever else as well. Um, and understanding that it's part of the, the, the phasic nature of what I'm doing. And with that in mind, um, maybe I can just talk about sort of why I've come to really appreciate maintenance and its importance. Importance, that's the word, importance. Um, it's a great jumping off point. It's a great um, thing to learn how to do as, I think, as a habitual dieter, but just as somebody like, I mean, this obviously takes the presupposition that you're tracking calories. Um, and so if you're not, probably not for you. But if you're tracking calories, um, it's a good thing to set so Skepis and Steve Hall from Revive Stronger they talk about it as like a primer phase, and it, and it is it's quite useful. Um, I use it essentially whenever I'm changing gears, right? So whenever I'm doing like going from like growth or cuts or yeah, either one of those, putting a maintenance phase of one phase in there, maybe two can just be a good way to get you to sort of like habitually learn how to eat for the diet essentially that you will be eating once you finish dieting, right? So like, obviously the goal is not to quote unquote diet forever um, in the fat loss sense. You may always have an eye on what your diet's doing, but in the fat loss sense, the goal should be to not diet anymore. So what does that look like? Well, that means eating at maintenance. And it's good because it teaches you how to be a little bit freer in the sense that you obviously have more calories, but it's usually not so many calories that you're like, you know, like in a growth phase where you're just like, woo, beer's coming back in, a little bit of junk food and some ice cream and all that. Like at maintenance, you're sort of just like, oh, I can have a beer and maybe a little, little little ice cream or something in there, but you're not sort of going full tilt. You're sort of still keeping an eye on your composition and what you're doing. So it's like you can sort of, you know, close one eye and sort of start to eyeball meals and stuff like that, but you're not like in a growth phase where you can be a little bit more reckless. And I think that's a, an important lesson for dieters to learn because most dieters spend their whole life dieting. And when they're not dieting, they're, whether they know it or not, in a growth phase, like, right? So they're doing like, you know, I saw something from Spencer Nadalowski today where he's like, talking about metabolism and how it doesn't slow down and stuff like that, but basically like how most dieters spend most of their lives losing the same 10 pounds or kilos. And it's that idea that it's like starve, 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 binge. Now that happens in a weekly sort of like Monday to Friday starve weekend binge, but it also happens in a cyclical sort of four to eight week cut, 12 week cut. They're doing classes, they're running, they're smashing themselves with cardio, really torturing themselves with low amounts of food and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, they look good, whatever event they have or whatever. And then it's just like, boom, don't give a shit anymore, bouncing back, baby. And it's like, if you can get someone who is like that to start introducing periods of maintenance, um, and introducing even periods of growth. Um, so I have some clients now, um, one of my clients in particular, shout out Lenny, uh, just 
has come off the Good Life 8-week challenge. So she had 8, no, 12-week challenge. She had 12 weeks of dieting, pretty aggressive dieting. This is a 12-week challenge. And then went straight into dieting with me during PT. And it was just one of those things where like, she was doing a lot of steps and eating quite, I mean, she's, she's tiny, but she wasn't eating a lot of calories and weight loss wasn't happening as quickly as we'd like. Sort of, you know, that minimum of like, 0.5 0.5 to 1 kilo a week kind of area, barely getting that, getting half that. And it's one of those things where it's like, well, what can you do? Can you tell somebody who's on, you know, sub 1200 calories to just diet harder? Well, what expectations are you setting up for that person? What kind of habits are you creating? What kind of negative diet beliefs are you reinforcing? I'm about to have a visitor. Mr. Rude, can we just lay down, please? I'm sort of in the middle of something, please. Lay down? Okay, that's great. So what kind of habits are you reinforcing if you if you don't give that person a break? And how do you teach that person that having a break is okay and, you know, um, and beneficial? So one of the things we did with her in particular, and I would encourage most people to do, is, is talk about maintenance um, and talk about just like taking a break and, you know, educating them that with you know, an increase in calories can come a small amount of weight gain due to, you know, glycogen and stuff like that, increased water. But basically, like, just, you know, giving them a little bit of a break, teaching them how to eat, you know, in a controlled or semi-controlled environment where they're not overeating, they've got their eye on the prize, but enjoying food, enjoying food guilt-free, giving them a chance to cut down their steps and, you know, go out on a date or go out on to a festival or a party or a bar or a club or something and not blow out. And those habits for particularly for seasonal or um, continuous dieters are, are essential habits. And I think something that's contributed greatly to my own success. It's that idea that like, now I know how to eat to maintain my weight because you can do things like track your weight a few times a week. I mean, maybe not as much, but you can sort of keep an eye on how you're looking in the mirror. And like my thing when I was eating at maintenance, which I did for probably eight weeks, give or take, is actually quite liked how I looked in terms of leanness because obviously like I filled out a little bit more. I had a bit more definition. I just wasn't growing the muscle mass that I wanted to grow. But your average person who's dieting, if you can educate them on the benefits of it, we'll resist you, but we'll ultimately come to understand that like, if we can get you eating at maintenance and then even add like a tiny little growth phase, four to eight weeks, 12 weeks, that you ultimately might come out the other side dieting with higher calories. And it also gives you time, spending time at maintenance, gives you time for your body to acclimatize, settling point, setting set point, whatever you want to call it, your body will have time to adjust and regulate itself at its new weight. Particularly if you've had significant weight loss, you don't want to just be bouncing down and bouncing back up and you want to, you want to spend some time with the changes that you've accumulated and that will make success uh, long term. Now, it's a little harder when you want to just sell results as a coach, as a client, when you want to walk into work and be like, boom, deal with that. You know, you've, you've got to be like, I don't fucking look as good as I did three weeks ago when I was gaunt. I look a little bit plumper now. But even those are things that you need to teach people how to do to, to love their curves. And not in a, like, I mean, I'm not opposed to the health at any size movement, but not even as extreme as that. Like, if you have fat loss goals, um, just being able to love, like, the fact that you're not, like, because I think when you're dieting for a long period of time, uh, you, the skinny becomes something that you like, that you be, that you become a climate climatized to. And when you start eating more and you put on a bit of water and you start to feel quote unquote fat, which obviously isn't the case, particularly if you're doing successful maintenance. Um, and it can be hard when you're, when you're overweight still significantly overweight and you know, any of your goals to take that break. But I mean, part of fat loss is recomposition, which, you know, if you're dealing with beginners can be something that can happen anyway, irrespective of sort of like being in a deficit, but like you'll maximize some of those good curves that 
we want to see, you know, girls and whatever it is you want to care. I won't even try to uh, prescribe some kind of normativity about how you should look. But I mean, if you're coming to a PT or coach training yourself for some kind of body manipulation, then you will have an idea and those are areas that you want bigger and smaller and having time at maintenance in growth phases can accentuate those things that will ultimately be built through muscle. Um, so I guess sort of key takeaway points is it's good for the longevity of the diet itself. You know, like while you don't necessarily lower metabolism, you do decrease like non-exercise activity thermogenesis, so how much you fidget. Um, you decrease thermic effect of food when you're dieting, obviously, because you're having less calories. Um, so, and you decrease your basal metabolic rate because you decrease your size. Uh, so things like that, you know, so you can you can even out some of those processes and also just give yourself some time, give yourself a break, give yourself some time to learn how to eat, like how you're going to eat when you finish, which is something that like, like I will tell clients, I told a client today, like if you're like, she's lost, I think in the last, so what would it be? Last six months, she's lost like seven kilos. Um, and it was like one of those things that we both realized that today. And I was like, amazing job. And I was like, if you're going to quit PT, tell me like a month beforehand, because what we'll do is we'll just start teaching you. I mean, we're going to have, we're going to have maintenance phases and stuff like that in, we're not there yet, but we're going to have them, but it'll be that case that it'll be like, look, just give me an extra month. Let me teach you how to eat at maintenance, how to have that give and take, how to have those high and low days without getting into a starve and binge scenario and then send you on your way. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like you're teaching, like I think a lot of trainers, myself included, tend to focus on the whole like getting them to their goal. But part of it is also teaching them what to do when they're there, how to maintain that goal long term and even how to build on that, right? So like, let's say just quickly before we finish, you get somebody to a 20 kilo fat loss thing and they're like, they're, they're lean and they're feeling great or like, let's not even say they're lean. Let's just say they, they're feeling healthy. All health markers have improved, mobility, flexibility, strength, uh, blood markers, whatever, or all of that. You want to give them the tools to then maintain that or grow, right? Like, so they may go like, all right, I'm lean. Let's build that ass or let's build my arms or let's build my shoulders. And it's like, teaching them how to then go from a maintenance phase to some slight growth without losing their shit, you know, without having that bounce back, without having that like starving binge loop that so many dieters get into. So I don't know, maybe this has just been meandering. I hope Logan's purring isn't too uh, annoying. Apparently he's decided now is the time for Faza Snuggles. Um... And like I said, as this is ad scripted and unscripted, there might have been stuff about maintenance calories, the importance of and stuff that I've mixed, missed. But just, you know, have it out there. Have it in the back of your mind that like, I think it's, um, you should spend half the time you dieted for at maintenance is a good guide. So, you know, usually 12 week cut, four to six week maintenance, 12 week cut, four to six week maintenance, something like that. But you can go, like I've said, you can go more, you can go 12 12 week cut, four week maintenance, eight week growth. Maintenance, cut, maintenance, grow, maintenance, cut. And you're just acclimatizing to where you want to be and then add the changes that you want to make. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else, Logan? Anything you want to add? I think he said eat fish. So that's probably good advice. Um, eat fish. All right. Um, thanks so much, guys. Any thoughts, queries, criticisms, notes? Don't be afraid to, you know, do the social media thing. And uh, thanks very much.